Good afternoon. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, trying to get out here and get a video made before it starts raining again. Uh, Mom and I have been the last couple days trying to get things ready for this trip down to Florida. And But I had something on my mind, something's been bouncing around inside my skull and I just I wanted to share it with you and uh, so we're just going to go ahead and do this real, real quick um, I've had a saying that I, I've said for years that expectations are the breeding ground of disappointment if you have little expectations you have little disappointments if you have great expectations you have great disappointments. Now, much of our um, emotional turmoil in life is brought about by disappointments. Whether it's uh, anger and, uh, or sadness or whatever, we develop expectations. And when those expectations are not met, then we get, we get angry about it or we get discouraged about it. And, uh, and so a lot of times if we learn as, as we grow, as we mature, if we learn to temper our expectations, um, it's, you know, as I sit here now and look back over my youth and all of the conflicts and, and all of the, all of the interpersonal, uh, relationship wrecks that I had. Um, I, you know, I realize now I got a lot of my, my view on how a man should behave and how a man should treat other men from reading. And, um, and that can be, that can set a really high bar. And so there were things when I approached manhood and I moved into manhood there were things that I just absolutely 100% would not do because I wasn't going to be that guy. And uh, I, I was not going to do certain things to people who called me friend or, or people that I called friend. I wasn't going to behave in a certain way because um, friends don't do that. Uh, but apparently the guys I hung around with, they didn't read the same books I read. And to them, it was okay. And it would just, they would do things that would just, none of them are friends now, none of them. Um, because, but it would tear me up so bad because I had such high expectations uh, of their behavior. I expected that anybody who called me friend I expected them, they were going to treat me the same way that I treated them. Um, and there were certain, you know, now I wasn't, you know, I had my own issues. And, uh, you know, I wasn't the easiest guy to be around. Uh, but I was, there were just places I wouldn't go. There were lines that I would not cross. And uh, my expectations were that they wouldn't either but they did. Um, and it, the stress was so high because the expectations were so high. Um, we, you expect you're a young person, you go into a job and that job is a big disappointment. The reason that job is such a disappointment is because you developed out of thin air, you developed expectations for that job. You know, you're 17, 18, you get your first job flipping hamburgers and you think this is what it's gonna be like. You never experienced before, you don't know it, but you expect this is what this has to be like. I'm gonna be free. I'm gonna get my own money. Uh, I'm gonna be working all day with a bunch of other young people my age. And I'm finally moving out into freedom. I'm moving out into adulthood. Uh, what I've been looking and thinking that my parents have that I want. And you go and it ain't what you thought. It's not what you thought. And the disappointment is keen because the expectations were high. It's the same going to college. You go to college, 
and you pick a degree and you spend four years slogging after that degree and you get out and you expect to get a wonderful job. Um, and it doesn't happen because real world doesn't follow along the path of expectations. People do not follow along the path of expectations. It happens in the horse world as well. Um, people want a horse. They've never had a horse before. They've watched TV. They've watched movies. They've had friends that have horses. And they want a horse. They're going to buy a horse. So they buy a horse. They have expectations of what they expect that relationship with that horse is going to be. Uh, I, this... I watched Spirit of the Cimarron, so I know how this is going to turn out. When I was a kid, I read Black Beauty. Uh, I'm going to love this horse, and this horse is going to love me. And uh, we're going to gallop bareback across the plains with the wind in our hair. And, and uh, those are expectations. That's not reality. Uh, people, I expect this is how it's going to feel to ride a horse. I expect that when I communicate to the horse, this is how the horse is going to respond to my communication. I expect that when I walk out there with carrots and apple slices and, and treats and, and my heart just full of love and emotion for that horse, that the horse is going to reciprocate. And they don't. And a lot of people, after a while, they get out of horses. They just quit horses. Was there something wrong with the horses? No. The horse just wound up being, in reality, what a horse is. The only problem was the person's expectations. And the greater their expectations, the greater their disappointment. All right? So if you are going through life right now and relationships and yourself uh, and your job and your church, your pastor, um, your your new hobby your whatever and you just find you know every everywhere i turn it's just a disappointment got a new girlfriend and she's just a disappointment well if she's a disappointment it's because you expected certain things without knowing why you would expect those certain things your job is a disappointment because you expected it to be like this if you want to cut down on the disappointments in your life, just take a step back, take a deep breath, and temper your expectations. Because life is life, and people are people. And if you approach a new friendship, a new relationship, and you have no expectations, then when it falls apart, you have no disappointments. Okay, uh, you approach a new job. And it's like this job is a means to buy groceries, and that's that's all I expect from it. I expect a paycheck. I do not expect fulfillment. I do not expect to find my destiny. I do not expect to find my personal identity. I do not expect to find the joy that reaches to the skies from this job. What I expect is a paycheck. And I don't expect that paycheck to be very good. I expect them to take a lot of taxes out and a lot of fees and stuff, but I expect a paycheck. And then if you get a little bit more from that, if you make good friends there, if you find fulfillment in your work, uh, if you find how you want to spend the rest of your life, then you're pleasantly surprised. But if you walk into it expecting Again, like I bring up all the time, if you go into it expecting Hollywood, if you approach life like it's a Hallmark movie, then your life is going to be one great, big, giant disappointment. And I think maybe if several of you, there's several people out there, there's a lot of people out there in the world. If you look at your, if you actually step back and analyze and look at your depressions, Look at your um, lack of ambition. Look at your, your lack of willingness to enter into new relationships. Look at your unwillingness to go back into church. Uh, unwillingness to trust people. Unwillingness to just to get back on the horse again. Unwillingness to go back to the gym. 
uh, a lot of it is if you'll sit down and sort through it, it was unrealistic expectations. Ran smack dab into reality. And it fathered a bunch of disappointment. All right? You can't be 40 pound overweight, 48 years old, and expect to go to the gym and keep eating like you eat and walk out of there in two weeks looking like the Wolverine. Not realistic expectations. Okay? You can't be extremely overweight and out of shape and not exercise and spend three weeks on Jenny Craig and come away looking like some Hollywood model. Your expectations are not realistic. And when unrealistic expectations run into real world reality, you wind up with crushing disappointment. Okay? So just stop expecting so much. The adventure is seeing what is around the corner, what is over the hill, what is around the bend. What's around that bend? I don't know. Let's go find out. What's over that hill over there? I have no idea. And not having any idea is part of the fun. That's part of the adventure. So what are we going to do? Let's go climb that hill and look on the other side and see what's there. What do you expect to be there? I have no idea. If I climb that hill and look on the other side and there's a swamp, I didn't expect anything different, so I'm not disappointed. If I find a beautiful little meadow with a stream, a brook running through it, and three or four deer feeding, maybe a giant six by six elk out there, then I'm ecstatic and it's all good. Because the adventure is climbing the hill to see what's on the other side, not sitting on this side, making up what is going to be on the other side, and then going over the hill to see if what you made up in your mind is actually there. That is a funky way to go through life. Okay? Just, just don't do it. Just, I'm going to say it again. Just chill. Okay? Just approach life. What's around the bend? What's around the corner? What am I going to find in this new friendship? What am I going to find in this new relationship? I have no idea. It might be a swamp. If it is, I'll walk away. I've lived this, this long without that person. I'll live the rest of my life without them. It's all good. But if they turn out to be a wonderful person, a person that just clicked with, one of those friends for the ages, then I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised. But I won't know until I go over that hill with no preconceived expectations. All right? All right. I don't know. Just want to encourage you a little bit. It's just been banging around in my skull, and I thought, I need to get this out. Somebody might need that. Um, if they come to me and say, Dwayne, you're going to be stranded on an island for a year, and we're going to provide you with one year's supply of one cigar a day. We're going to give you 365 cigars, but they have to be the exact same cigar. You can't have a variety. This right here would probably be in my top three contentions, the Partagas Black Label. Um, and uh, I talk about them on here. You know, I smoke them all the time. Very rich, very robust, very dark, strong, but not brutally overpowering. Uh, Shane Werda at uh, CigarPlace.biz, I've talked about on here. He sent me. I got a box from him this week. had five of these in there. And uh, so he, he knows, he knows how my palate runs. And, and uh, so I'm having this tonight. Um, Cigar Place, that's, they are a sponsor. They're sponsoring me. And uh, I've, I have probably this week eight emails from different companies wanting me to sponsor them on here, and I turned them all down. Um, but Shane and the Cigar Place, they're good folks, and so I'm happy to talk about them. Uh, they ship stuff. They ship it quick. It's packed proper. It comes in. Uh, I've had no complaint about the prices or anything. And uh, so people are wondering, you know, they all the time, Dwayne, where do you order in online your cigars? I get them from the cigar place. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of places out there, but this, this company, they're very personable, and they take good care of me. Okay? So, anyhow, there's that. Uh, we don't forget the podcast. The uh, Dry Creek Rainer podcast is over there, and we we do still have the Patreon account for those who are trying to 
who want to support what we're trying to do here. And we have, uh, you know, Mama still has her channel and uh, Dry Creek Mama. Our next video is, uh, we're actually going to video tomorrow. And uh, we're so we've been getting ready for this week-long trail ride down in Florida. So tomorrow, if it ain't pouring rain, uh, we're going to do a video on everything that we've got together and what we're taking and why we're taking it. We're going to have a complete layout. And so we're going to do that tomorrow and then upload that in the next two or three days. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. All right. So wish you guys all the best. Um, be logical. Be reasonable. And be safe. And have fun. And we'll catch you guys next time.